We've had a big discussion about artificial intelligence, uh, lots of investment, lots of hype. Um, notwithstanding the fact that there's a pretty legitimate philosophical argument whether artificial intelligence actually exists or not. Notwithstanding that, you know, the whole science of predictive technology um, is transforming just about everything we do. Um, the uh, idea of raising the concept of artificial empathy is to point out uh, a gap uh, to identify a problem that uh, needs work. And um, the conjunction of artificial and empathy uh, is a little bit uh, shocking a little bit disruptive, and uh, it's intended to shake people out of a complacency that uh, that what we're doing with customer experience and corporate governance is somehow sufficient to overcome a fundamental problem in the way corporations and human beings uh, are interacting with each other in uh, today's economy. So that's that's the starting point. Well, Glenn, how important is is empathy? In a, in a business sense or in a marketing sense? I mean, isn't it about intelligence? Mm -hmm. So here's the, um, here's the basic observation. Empathy is an essential and defining human quality. Uh, and, uh, you know, some of the things that, uh, uh, that make that true are uh, rooted in our physiology. We have uh, mirror neurons so that, uh, you know, when I observe happiness or sadness on uh, your facial features, uh, I have neurons in my brain that will make me feel uh, physically uh, the, the emotions that you're experiencing. Uh, we have an endocrine system that uh, both uh, produces oxytocin and uh, and uh, and reacts uh, so that, uh, you know, those that we are close with, we are closer with because of that hormonal response. So empathy is actually flowing in our bloodstream. Um, in, in primate behavior, we're just one of several primates, um, endocrines are released through, you know, grooming behaviors so that we can actually influence each other's hormones through our interactions. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is, this is very essential to the nature of human beings. And it's also programmed into then our expectations. So we expect other human beings uh, to be empathetic. Now, what's really interesting is when we do a certain amount of neuroimaging on the way people react to corporate logos, they look at corporate logos as if they're other faces. They actually light up the same areas of the brain that light up when we're looking at faces. And we have an expectation. We think of corporations as if they were people. There's lots of evidence for this in advertising practices, the use of personas to develop brand strategy. Um, uh, and, and there's evidence even in you know, our legislative record uh, in the United States, um, uh, corporations are granted a human right of freedom of speech with the Citizens United ruling. So um, there's all sorts of evidence that we anthropomorphize corporations no less than we anthropomorphize dogs and cats and Disney characters and so on. And so here we get to the nub of the issue. We are empathetic. We expect other people to be empathetic. We perceive corporations uh, as if they were other people. And we expect corporations then to be empathetic. But the problem is corporations lack mere neurons. They lack an endocrine system. They lack all that biological inheritance that we have for empathy. And so there's uh, uh, a disconnect between our natural intuitive expectations of the way corporations should behave and the capacities that, are, that corporations have today uh, to act and interact in the world. I think what really we need to do is to go back and look at this um, in terms of the, the ideological architecture of the firm, the kinds of things that Peter Drucker was talking about in the theory of the business. So for instance, how do we conceive uh, segmentation and what's its purpose? You know, is segmentation's purpose uh, to allow us to you know, target uh, the audiences that will buy our products and uh, package up the representation of the features and benefits of our products 
in such a way that the customers uh, will buy in the economics of the, the, the production sales and marketing apparatus will be optimized? Or is the purpose of segmentation to find different groups of people uh, with different wants and needs that we can satisfy um, by leveraging our knowledge and, and capacities uh, to satisfy that customer with what we have today to design what that customer will want tomorrow uh, and to really build value in that relationship in a way that is, frankly, empathetic. So how is this? I mean, you and I have been, we've worked together for over 30 years and we've helped build uh, organizations, we've helped build brands, we've helped build relationships between um, organizations and consumers, brands and consumers, uh, publics, and, and uh, organizations. So uh, artificial empathy, if we had, are we going to be able to use this now as a, as a tool to help do those things that I just mentioned? Is this going to be applicable? Yeah. So what I'd like to propose is that artificial empathy is a provocation. Uh, in the innovation literature, um, they say that, uh, you know, you get one point for solving a problem, you get two points for discovering a problem. And uh, I would like to propose that uh, claiming the phrase artificial empathy is the discovery of a problem, that organizations do not have a natural capacity for empathy. But empathy is a natural expectation of customers and the broader public that corporations must act this way. You know, one of the possible readings of the article is to say, well, clearly you're talking here, Glenn, about customer experience, these things that I've just mentioned. Well, yes, that's true. But if customer experience is uh, a department, if it's a, a metric that has to do with whether you know, people will recommend you or not, and, you know, measuring performance on that metric, keeping a score. These things aren't empathetic. And even if there are, you know, brief fluorescences of improvements in customer experience, uh, but we haven't got to the fundamental structural problem of building empathy, uh, almost from a biomimicry standpoint into the corporation, then I don't think we're going to fundamentally solve the problem. And uh, as the blog says, uh, you know, sociopaths are um, actually notable for their ability to be charming now and then. <laughs> AQ's Blog and Grill.